Hello out there. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Richard Hunt. I live in Chesapeake, Virginia. And one of my great love in this day and age is I love to read. And I've been in a healthcare nut for years and years and years. And I always re realized that my body is a vehicle. And for that vehicle to run good, it needs good, a good substance, the right fuel. And food is the fuel I use for my body to basically live. With that being said, I have to watch what I'm eating. You would not put diesel in a gasoline engine, nor should there be certain things that we put into our body because in the end, it will be very destructive. Here's a good example about Americans. When a group of students came from Thailand, one of the girls looked at me one day and she said, why are so many Americans overloaded? Well, me being me, I said, went into myself. I said, what do you mean? Fat? She said, yes, fat. Most of the Americans are fat. And then I had to think about that for a moment. And I said, basically, it's because people are eating at fast food restaurants. They are drinking a lot of sodas with sugar in it. And also, they are not exercising. And there's also other factors involved, too. But basically, they have a different frame to them, the Thai people and the students that came from overseas that I was more or less associated with. Today, I'm going to be covering salt. I just covered sugar. There are three main types of salt, commonly used in cooking and food preparations. There's the table salt, there's the sea salt, and there's the Himalayan pink salt. And here are the three key differences between them. Table salt, basically, is sodium chloride. It's highly refined and processed to remove impurities. It contains anti-caking agent like sodium silicon aluminates, which is basically the base of that is aluminum. And if you know anything about aluminum, they were putting aluminum in baking soda, and a lot of people was using that for indigestion and also, you know, for the health. And basically, a lot of people had medical problems with it. And when they went to the source, Arm & Hammer, basically, they put a lawsuit and they said it was never meant for that consumption. So they got out of that. So it's typically iodized to prevent iodine deficiency. It has a finer texture and dissolve easily. Around 97 through 99% is per sodium chloride. And then we go into sea salt. Sea salt is good. I like sea salt. It uh, obtains through evaporation of seawater. Minimally processed, may contain trace element. It's a coarser texture than table salt. It contains small amounts of minerals like potassium, iron, and zinc. It may contain trace elements like microplastics and heavy metal depending on the source. Himalayan salt, pink salt, uh, that's the one I like the best because basically I work out in the sun and I'm constantly sweating and I need to restore my, you know, water content in my body. So I use a little um, Himalayan salt with some lemon and some water to replenish myself. It's mined from ancient salt deposits in the Himalayan mountains. It's a pinkish color due to trace elements of iron oxide. It's slightly lower sodium content than table salt, around 
0.7% sodium chloride contain small amounts of minerals like calcium, potassium, and magnesium. And we all need magnesium. It's a coarser texture, similar to some sea salt. In terms of health benefits, all three salts provide similar amount of sodium when consumed in equal quantity. Table salt is the most refined but is fortified with iodine. But also you can, cannot forget that it's silico aluminite that is also in it to prevent it from caking. And aluminum is very bad for the brain and for the body because they say that aluminum is what has caused like Alzheimer when you get older. Table salt is the most refined, but is fortified with iodine, which is beneficial. Sea salt and Himalayan salt may contain trace element of other minerals, but the quantity are ne negligible in typical dietary intake. The choice between them often comes down to personal taste preference, texture, and cost. For general cooking and baking, table salt is convenient, while coarse sea salt or Himalayan salt can add flavors and crunch using, used as a finishing salt. I really like Himalayan salt, and basically I like it because of the trace elements in it, the magnesium in it, and the other iron in it, so that provides me with what I need and to recharge many times and to put uh, electrolytes back into my body. So possibly maybe that will help you understand the salts and the choices you have out there. And please like and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye.